Now that we have Chrome and PHP Storm installed, let's go ahead and download XAMPP. So I'm going to click the XAMPP download link and it takes me to apachefriends.org slash download. And I'm on Windows, so I'm going to download they just have 32-bit versions, but I'll download the latest one, which is 5.6.12 right now. Okay, so that's downloaded. Let's go ahead and run it. So far, everything's going okay. So here's the actual install. Okay, that took about three or four minutes. Um, I'm not going to start the control panel because I want to show you how to do that manually. And I'm just going to go ahead and click Finish. So what that did was, on Windows, under my C folder, I have a new XAMPP folder here. And this will be in a different place if you're in Linux or Mac OS. So let's scroll down and find XAMPP control. And I'm going to launch this. So what does XAMPP have? It has the Apache web server, MySQL database server, FileZilla FTP server, so if you want to run your own FTP site, you can set this up. And then Mercury is a mail program, and Tomcat is a web server using Java servlets. And if you're lucky, all you need to do is click the Start buttons. So you need to allow permission. And uh, you'll see it has a process ID and two ports. So port 80 is the main web server port and 443 is the secure port for HTTPS and uh, this means it worked. So I'm running a, an Apache web ser server right now. If this didn't work it's usually because you have another program running that has these ports bound already. So if that happens go to this netstat button and this shows all of the ports that are currently blocked or bound in the system along with the process ID and name of the program that has it bound. So since I just started up HTTPD, that's the Apache web server, port 80 and port 443 are bound by Apache, which is what you want. If you see something else here, it's probably a Windows service. And so the way you'd shut that down is go to Control Panel, Administrative Tools, Services, and then you're going to have to do a little hunting around. So look for anything that says World Wide Web or Web or Windows Web Service, anything like that. And if you find something that's running, like when HTTP, let's assume this was running and it was binding the web, you could click on it and then stop the service. So find any web services and stop them. And then go ahead and uh, refresh and see whether the port is available now. So it should drop out of that list. And when port 80 and 443 are unbound, you should be able to start Apache. And then I'm also going to start the MySQL database server. And that starts on 3306. And I'll start FileZilla file as well. So apparently FileZilla is already locked, but I don't really care about that for now. So on these uh, module service checkboxes, you can also configure this to start up automatically at runtime. 
but you have to be running this as an administrator to get that option. Um, there's also access directly from here to some configuration files for Apache, which we'll look at later in the course. And same with MySQL. And there's also a direct link to the log files for the Apache web server and also for MySQL. So two other things to be aware of. The first one is if you want to quit this control panel, you need to click this quit button like so. And when you do that, the control panel goes away, but the services you started, the web service and the database service, are still running. That's what you want. If you forget and you just click the close box, it looks like it did the same thing, but you actually still have XAMPP control running. And so if you run it again, now I actually have two of them running, which is not what you want. So I'm going to go ahead and quit this one. And if you forget and you end up with one of these running in the task tray, just right click on it. It will show you the status of what's running and you can also quit from here. So we should have everything set up correctly. Let's go ahead and see if it works or not. I'm going to go to http colon slash slash localhost. And that should take me to the XAMPP dashboard. So this page is actually being served from my local web server, which I just installed. And they changed the uh, look and feel of this in a recent version. So what I want to do is go to PHP info. And this is showing me everything about my running um, PHP. So I'm using version 5.6.12. There's a bunch of configuration options and so on. But basically, if you see this page, it means everything is working, the web server is running, and PHP is attached correctly. This file is actually being served out of, back under your XAMPP folder, you'll see there's an htdocs folder. And this is where all your web docs live. So for example, if I create a new file, And I'll call it hello.html. And then I'll edit this in Notepad. And I'll just make a simple HTML document. So here's a really simple HTML document. And then if I want to load that from the web server, it's right at top level under HDDocs. And so that's what I get. So that's everything we need to do to install XAMPP. In the next video, we'll look at integrating PHP Storm with XAMPP so that we can do debugging.